This is Mark Wells with the Wells Report for For My People. The Federative Republic of Brazil, or simply Brazil as it is known by millions. For some, the name of this South American country conjures up images of sand, samba rhythms, sexy women, and soccer. But there is far more to learn about this tropical country than the average person may realize. For instance, how many of us know that half of Brazil's nearly 200 million citizens are black? According to many activists and social scientists, Brazil has the largest black population outside of Africa. But how is it that there are so many African descendants living in Brazil and the average American doesn't realize it? Well, to start, in Brazil, as in the United States, there are many negative connotations that are associated with blackness. In the nation's imagination, to be black is to be ugly, dumb, and poor. Because of this stigma, Many persons who would be considered black in the United States either deny being black or are encouraged to deny their blackness. For instance, when asked, this eight-year-old girl from the northeastern state of Bahia didn't know what race she was. Senhor, she doesn't know. This eight-year-old boy identified himself as white when asked which race he belonged to. Qual é sua raça? Well, he's white. He's white. Similarly, although this man identifies himself as black, under the category of racial classification on his birth certificate, he is listed as pardon, a loosely defined catch-all term meaning brown or mixed race. <laughs> Historically, for many Brazilians, only persons possessing the dark brown complexion of soccer legend Pele should be classified as black. Because of this concept of race, in Brazil and Latin America in general, well-known self-defined Afro-Brazilian actresses such as Thais Araújo, Camila Pitanga, and Sharon Menezes would be classified as brown instead of black. This explains why only 7% of Brazilians are defined as black on the country's official census report while 42% are defined as brown and 49% white. According to U.S. standards, many of those people who define themselves as brown or white would be classified as black. Throughout its history, the concept of race in Brazil has been the flip side of a concept that science has defined as fallacious. In the United States, the infamous one drop of black blood rule defined any person of any known African ancestry as black. While in Brazil, it could be argued that a person possessing a drop of non-African blood can define themselves or be defined as non-black. Thus, had they been born in Brazil or any number of other Latin American countries, people like singers Beyonce, Prince, Lena Horne, or even the women of the 90s R&B group in Vogue may not have necessarily defined themselves as black. But over the past 20 years, there has been a shift in the racial consciousness of a large parcel of Brazil's population. Through the efforts of hundreds of organizations collectively known as the Movimento Negro, or the Black Civil Rights Movement, more and more Brazilians of color are defining themselves as black. Perhaps no better example of this rising black consciousness is the annual day of black consciousness that is celebrated in more than 350 cities throughout Brazil every November 20th. During this celebration, thousands of rappers, activists, musicians, and social organizations take to the streets to protest the treatment of Brazil's black population and the endemic social inequality so deeply ingrained in Brazilian society. This year, along with the controversial battle for the implementation of affirmative action policies and the demand for reparations for descendants of African slaves, a common theme on the minds of many Brazilians was the historic election of Illinois Senator Barack Obama as the 44th President of the United States. Throughout the day, the celebration of Obama's historic victory could be seen in the numerous Obama flyers and t-shirts worn by participants in the day's festivities. Another common theme amongst participants was the controversy surrounding what many perceived to be an occupation of Haiti by Brazilian military troops. Over the past several years, a number of items targeted specifically at the Afro-Brazilian population have shined the spotlight on a population that has been historically neglected. Hasa Brazil magazine has been a consistent presence on the newsstands throughout Brazil since 1996 
and features beauty and fashion tips for Afro-Brazilian women, as well as interviews with public figures and reports on current events. Another annual event shining the spotlight on the Afro-Brazilian population is the Trofeo Raça Negra, or the Black Race Awards, which is described as the Oscars of the black community and is somewhat re reminiscent of the NAACP Image Awards. The Trofeo Raça Negra Awards honors the year's best athletes, actors, musicians, humanitarians, groups, and individuals who have dedicated themselves to improving the plight of black people in Brazil. During this black tie event, some of black Brazil's finest entertainers and public figures come together to celebrate Brazil's month of black consciousness and to valorize the contributions of Afro-Brazilians to Brazilian society. Besides awards given to Afro-Brazilian public figures and a special tribute to Wilson Simonal, one of Brazil's most popular singers, the 2008 Rafael Raça Negra Awards also honored the accomplishments of famed R&B singer Billy Paul who was on hand to receive this special award. Earlier this year, Brazil and Latin America's only black university celebrated the graduation of its first cohort. The Zumbi of Palmares University of Citizenship is named for the 17th century warrior who led Brazil's longest surviving society of runaway slaves in Brazil's Northeast. In 2003, the university opened its doors in the Luz district of the city of Sao Paulo. The university has recently formed bonds with America's historically black colleges and universities by sponsoring a two-week exchange program with Xavier University in New Orleans, Louisiana. The program would send two students and a faculty member from Palmares to Xavier for a, week, for a period of two weeks. Jose Vicente, the head of University of Palmares, sees the university as a reference point for Afro-Brazilians who would most likely not have had the opportunity to obtain a college education otherwise. So although some estimate it will take another 20 years for Brazil's black population to earn an equal quality of life as its white population, Brazil's black population continues to demonstrate that the United States is not the only country in need of change. This is Mark Wells and this has been the Wells Report for For My People.